folks, continuing on talking about the comic book adapted movies, uh, continuing on with Marvel, uh, I know last time I said I was going to talk about the MCU, um, actually I wanted to go a little off to the left with Marvel because remember there was another Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, that was completely different than what it is now. Um, they weren't necessarily connected. They were just taking comic book characters and adapting them into film. And, uh, of course, uh, you may know I got my tripod fixed today. Yes, I found another mount. It was the mount that broke, so that was why I was holding the, the camera turning back to me but uh, yeah I picked these now these this is not everything um, this is everything that I have I do not have several movies there were several movies produced by Fox and uh, various other studios uh, that um, Marvel had worked with I do not have Blade uh, any of the Blade movies, I do not have the any of the Fantastic Four movies, and I do not have uh, any of the Daredevil movies. So, and there's a perfect reason because those are very mixed, and as well, getting into this, this is very mixed as well. Um, I think starting off, we're going to talk about The Punisher. Now, this is the... Now, they did make a sequel to this, but it had didn't have any of the actors returning or anything like that. It was, um, this is the one with Thomas Jane and uh, John Travolta and um, Rebecca Romaine Stamos is in this and Roy Scheider. It's, um... A lot of mixed opinions on The Punisher. This was released by Lionsgate in 2004. Um, yeah, a lot of people didn't really care for this movie. Um, it is what it is. Now, um, Marvel has turned this into a TV show rather than spend money on making a movie they'd rather just do a TV show on Netflix where you could get by with such content you know R-rated content and so, and so on and so forth now that being said I want to go to one of the greatest love-hate movies of all time Howard the Duck. Yeah, this is probably one of the more earlier Marvel comic movies to come to the screen. I'm not quite sure how that all worked, but uh, to be quite honest, when I was a kid, I loved Howard the Duck every time it was on. Um... Is it a good movie? No. <laughs> Did we have a lot of fun watching Howard the Duck? Absolutely. Um, and it was so... It was such a box office bomb that George Lucas said to take the name Lucasfilm off of it. It, it, it still says George Lucas Presents... But uh, it's not Lucasfilm. It's it's just Universal Pictures. And um, at the time, I didn't know what half the stuff was. In. There's some very dirty stuff in this movie. Um, and of course, that's kind of the way the the comic is. He's kind of a a foul mouth foul mouth beer drinking duck and it's only rated PG so it's not terribly profane but it does have some stuff in it that's 
very inappropriate for children. Uh, I mean, duck boobs. I rest my case. Yeah, um, and of course, uh, Leah Thompson and her her scene with Howard uh, in the bed. <laughs> yeah, there were some questions of bestiality there, but yeah, it's only it's only rated PG, so it only goes so far. Um, Tim Robbins. In one of his earlier roles, um, Jeffrey Jones uh, playing the villain. You know, is the dark overlord of the universe. Of course, he talks like this the entire time, like he's got a frog in his throat and uh, he's completely possessed. Yeah, um, it, but you know, every time. It came on when, when I was a kid. We watched Howard the Duck. And despite its major, major flaws, we enjoyed the heck out of it. And we even knew it was a bad movie. It, but we still had a, an, a good time watching it. Now, now here's where I want to get into... Um, this was kind of what I'm talking about, the MC, the pre-MCU, um, minus The Amazing Spider-Man. But um, first we had, right after X-Men, we had this. Um, now, of course, this is a Blu-ray set. Uh, it has all three of the Spider-Man movies. We had this, which was... Directed by Sam Raimi, all three films, starring Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. Now, these were very popular at the time, um, minus the third one. The third one did, wasn't as popular as what the previous two. Uh, Spider-Man 2 is deemed to be the best of that Spider-Man series. Um, I thought Spider-Man 1 was okay. I thought it was very good for what it was. Um, Spider-Man 2, yeah. And then Spider-Man 3, and when you get, uh, Venom and the Sandman in there, it's, um, it was just running out of steam, and Sony decided to reboot and that leads us into The Amazing Spider-Man. I'll hold off on The Amazing Spider-Man for just a moment. Because of the success of Spider-Man, Universal, who had the rights to The Incredible Hulk, said, uh, we're going to throw that into production as well. So, because of Spider-Man... Universal dishes, dishes out Hulk, directed by Ang Lee. And this movie drove people crazy. Um, I will say this. This movie has good parts to it, and it has some terrible parts to it. Oh, boy. Um... I think the visual effects are very, very good in this film. Uh, however, they do get something wrong that they did correct for the Edward Norton version, but even that was something else. Um, what the what what I'm talking about is every time the Hulk gets angry, he's really supposed to get stronger, but in this. Um, the Hulk becomes bigger when he becomes angry, uh, more and more angry. He gets bigger and bigger. And that's, there's a difference between getting bigger and being stronger. Um, a big difference. And the, also the problem with 
another problem with this movie was another people talk about the Hulk dogs. They had a problem with the Hulk dogs. That doesn't bother me so much as the backstory. Why in the world is there 45 freaking minutes of backstory for this character? You don't need that. So, and another thing that really bugged me about the Hulk was the editing. I hated the comic book style editing. It drove me crazy. It just, ugh. Just, you know, all the, all the, all the wipes, all the segues, and the, you know, the, you know, the balloon type of, can't, you know, like the scene would go like this, and it would substitute with the other one, and or or it would transition into one scene, and some of the scenery would drop out, and then other scenery would come, in, and it would just form this. This new it would form the new scene, but that drove me crazy. Why can't why couldn't you just have straight cut fade or whatever to go to continue the story on? Because there's no there was no reason for this to be how long two hours and eighteen minutes for Hulk. When that could have been easily cut down to about, I'm going to say around 100 minutes, an hour and 45 minutes, because we did not need, necessarily need all that backstory. Anyway, so, in 2008, Marvel Studios announces that they're going to create the MCU. And they're going to do the Avengers. Okay? So, at the time, Marvel Studios was under contract with Paramount. And Paramount was going to, was the first studio to launch the Avengers. And so, the only property that they didn't have was the Hulk. The Incredible Hulk. That would be universal. And so, Paramount puts out Iron Man, Iron Man 2, Captain America, the first Avenger, and Thor. Okay? So, they got the ball rolling. Then Disney comes along in 2010, buys Marvel, buys Marvel Studios, and they're going to continue, they said, this is great, we're going to continue on with this, but they, another problem that they ran into is that other studios own Marvel movie property. So Disney says, have a, he said, we'll allow you to keep these films, these characters, and as long as you have a film in product in pre-production by such and such time. And the word spread out to 20th Century Fox. They put in X-Men, uh, X-Men uh, First Class. That would be their first. And then Sony launched The Amazing Spider-Man. Because they wanted to keep Spider-Man. And it's a complete reboot of the whole series. This isn't Spider-Man. This is The Amazing Spider-Man. With, uh, what's his name? Andrew Garfield playing Spider-Man. And I think they had a solid piece going for it. And it was this was directed by Mark Webb. They had a solid 
movie going. It wasn't the greatest thing, but they had something solid. Then they make The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And doesn't do that well. Pretty much sending the whole series into complete upheaval. So much so that Sony comes crawling to Disney saying, You can have Spider Man. We get to release the standalone movies, but you can do whatever you want with Spider Man. You can even put him in the Avengers. But, but for his standalone movies, we still distribute them, but you can have say so and you can do whatever with that character that you wish to do. And plus, Andrew Garfield pretty much screwed it up. He wanted to do things that was not called for in the whole Spider-Man lure. Uh, I'm not going to say what that is, but, um, but yeah, they pretty much dropped the ball on the Amazing Spider-Man. And like I said, this is all I have of the different Marvel Comics movies. I do not have Blade or um, the Punisher sequels or the, um, or the Fantastic Four or Daredevil. Because Daredevil and Elektra, that universe... Fox dropped the ball on that, and that just went nowhere. They really messed that one up. But uh, hopefully they fixed it in the TV show. I have not seen it. I do not have Netflix. <laughs> so, I think next time we'll dive into what is now known as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I have no idea how long that video is going to be. It's going to be quite... Lengthy, I know that because they've been turning out movies for the past 10 years, and so that's quite a catalog to talk about. But anyway, from me to you, see you later.